This video is the first in a 10-part series on the Bitcoin Standard, a book by economist Seifdin Amus. If you had to read only one book about Bitcoin and Austrian economics, this is the one to read. You can find a link to purchase the book in the description of this video. This series includes 10 videos, one for each chapter of the book, and this video focuses on the information contained within Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Money Money is the solution to a problem that has persisted for all of human existence. That problem is how to move economic value across time and space. The simplest way for people to exchange value is to exchange goods with one another directly in a process called barter. The problem with barter is that it only works in small groups with only a few goods and services produced. For the purposes of this book, a good is anything you want to sell to another person. A good can be your labor, services, expertise, food, gold, livestock, etc. Literally anything you want to sell is considered a good, including money. As societies grow, the opportunity for specialization increases, and more goods and services are possible among more and more people. This creates a growing problem called the coincidence of wants. The problem of coincidence of wants can be broken into three subcategories. Coincidence of scales, coincidence of time frames, and coincidence of location. In other words, it will become less and less likely that you will meet a person who coincidentally wants what you have to offer in exactly the amount you want to sell at precisely the time and location you want to sell it. Imagine wanting to sell shoes for a house. You can't buy the house in small pieces nor does the homeowner want an enormous amount of shoes equal in value to the house. This problem compounds if the good is perishable or non-divisible, like food or livestock. The only way around this problem is through indirect exchange, which means that you temporarily exchange your goods for something you don't actually want, in order to try to find another person who will exchange it for the goods you do actually want. That intermediary good is called a medium of exchange. What tends to happen is that a single medium of exchange emerges for everyone to trade all goods for. That single medium of exchange is called money. The concept of saleability simply means how much do people want your good? The most desired good is money, and therefore it is said to be, by definition, the most saleable of all goods. There are three essential properties of money. Number one, medium of exchange. This is the most important function of money. Money is a medium of exchange because it is purchased in order to be exchanged for something else. Number two, store of value. Money is a store of value because it preserves your purchasing power over time. Money should be difficult to produce, otherwise known as hard money. If it is easy to produce, otherwise known as easy money, people will produce more of it, driving its value down which in turn makes it a bad store of value. Historically, the people who have chosen the hardest money, whether by choice or accident, have accrued the most wealth. The implications of hard or easy money go far beyond financial wealth. Those who choose a good store of value are much more likely to plan for the future than those who choose bad stores of value. The third essential property of money is a unit of account. A unit of account means that you price every good in the same unit of money relative to every other good, based on their relative scarcity. Money is the unit of account because everything is priced in money, not in terms of other goods, which would get extremely complicated. A good measure of the hardness of money is its stock-to-flow ratio. The stock of the money is how much of the money currently exists, and the flow is how much of it is produced per year. Think of stock as all the gold in all vaults around the world, and the flow is how much gold is mined per year. It is no coincidence that gold was chosen as money, but instead it was chosen because it had the highest stock-to-flow ratio, meaning it was the hardest asset to create more of relative to its existing supply. The best money has a high stock-to-flow ratio, meaning it is the hardest to make more of it. Bitcoin is the hardest money ever invented because it will have an infinite stock-to-flow ratio, and because it's impossible to create more than 21 million Bitcoin. 
Check out my previous video explaining why there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. The link is found below in the description of this video. Also, be sure to watch the next video in this 10-part series, which will summarize Chapter 2 of the Bitcoin Standard. Chapter 2 is entitled Primitive Monies, and it is a fascinating look at primitive monies used around the world in ancient times, and their similarities and differences to the modern fiat money system and Bitcoin.